Hi, welcome back. We are with April Brucker. I'm saying that right? Yeah, it's April Brucker. Yeah, yeah. Brian with Hooker. Fantastic. Great, great <laughs> to know. Uh, we're here at uh, Las Vegas up close, just six feet away. Uh, 2021 uh, began today. Very excited about that. And we're talking about entertainment in Las Vegas, how the pandemic has affected it. We are back. We have some shows going on. And uh, with us today, April Brucker. Yes. It sounds like Hooker. <laughs> no, I said it wrong? Okay. Well, but, but whatever. Just don't call me late for dinner, as my grandmother said. <laughs> Amen to that. America's foremost female ventriloquist. <laughs> So with the pandemic, I've become a ventriloquist. I, really? I can't see my <laughs> Thank you. You're pretty good. You might even be replacing me if I'm not careful. Oh, <laughs> you never know. The genetics can do anything these days. So uh, great to have you with us. Uh, you are starring in a show at the Alexis Park Resort. Yes, Burlesque is the name of the show. Yeah. And what is the role that you play and how do we get to see the April Brooker? The rhymes with hooker. I, I almost got it. Uh, we don't want that to become your, your statement. Here. No, we'll, we'll, we'll stop that. Right, that was it. Right there. We're done. Uh, April, tell me, tell me about the show, how you are in it, what you do, and what we can expect when we come to the show. Well, I am the special guest in the show, and when you see me, you can see me do some ventriloquism, and you can see me juggle a towel. But the main reason I'm here is that, Steve, um, you're married, right? Yes, ma'am. You know, and you get how hard dating is, right? Yes, ma'am. Well, Steve, I'm not looking for Mr. Right. I'm just desperately seeking Mr. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. How's and that coming? How's that going? Well, here's the thing. It's one of these things that's been really hard during quarantine. And, you know, and I've dated all these guys. Like, I dated one guy. He had OCD. Do you know anybody that had OCD, Steve? I do not. As a matter of fact, every time I got mad at him, I just rearranged his bookshelves. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's really hard. And, you know, and you know how things have been, like, were you quarantined with somebody that you liked, Steve? Yes, I was lucky. You were lucky. Is this your wife? Yes, ma'am. Are you saying that because she's watching? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I mean, no, no, it's, it's perfect. It's great. Well, anyway, I have this roommate, Mae Wilson. And okay. Have you ever just dated that girl that was just a slut? I was lucky I never had that issue. You never, even as a stand-up comic, you never had a groupie that... <laughs> See, that's why I destroyed all the tapes and everything. <laughs> Please, uh, so, yeah, well, Steve, forward. Steve, I've been quarantined with her, and oh, she's no. a slut. She's, she's such a slut that, you know, she'll have sex all night long, and she won't let me join his dates. Okay. <laughs> I, I need a new roommate, right? Uh, I would hope so. Do you have one in mind? I don't know. But she's so dumb that she wouldn't get on a double-decker bus because there was no driver on the top. And I'm like, hey, are you talking about me? May, May Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Hi, Steve. How are you doing today? I'm good. Better now that you're here. Oh, thank you so much. So, Steve. Yes, ma'am. What do I have to do to get a squad on one of your shows? I want to go solo. You see, with April, oh, my God, prop flash one on my own. I'm a star. <laughs> Wow, this is how ungrateful she is. This is how ungrateful she is. See, hey girl, you aren't even looking at the camera, but I was. Who's the dummy now? <laughs> this is so incredibly shady. And see, Steve, you can put me on your arm, you know, and I'll tell you, you're the most handsome man I've ever seen, and you're the best I've ever had. Stop it, May. <laughs> His wife might be watching. Oh, I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> I see his life of oh, May Wilson, ladies and gentlemen, my roommate. So, do we get to enjoy May during our uh, burlesque show? Yes, you do. And as a matter of fact, uh, May, tell them what you've been doing during the show. I've been looking for a sugar daddy because it's Vegas. <laughs> Any luck? No! What guy told me he would not be my sugar daddy last night? <laughs> 2020's canceling your dreams too. Well, that's over. It's 2021 now. <laughs> Well, good to have you on the show here with us today. So, have you had to change your act at all, man? Uh, have you had to change your act? Yes, I have. Well, actually, not really, because I've always been the star, and I'm still the star. <laughs> but jokes aside, uh, we have had to change a little bit, uh, because the audience isn't as close anymore. I don't know who I'm hitting on, and I don't know who's rich, because I can't see them. So you're just throwing out the vibe and hoping it works out? Yeah! <laughs> no luck yet. But it's really, um, but it's actually a little surreal because sometimes we can hear them laughing, but we can't see them. And then when they're not laughing, we can't see them, which is good. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that, mate. Well, it is what it is, A-Girl. You see, I consistently kill. A-Girl, not so much. 
Not very nice. Everybody. I know, I know. It's not very nice at all. You know what, May? You better behave. Or what? Or I'm gonna put you back in your trunk. You like dare. I might. I might. You're in charge. Thank you. Thank yes. you, Steve. Thank you for reminding me. We, we are here to interview April, and we appreciate May coming along, but. Uh, April, it's your show, and, and, and so have you had to put any masks on your uh, performers due to the pandemic? Uh, have we had to put any masks on? No, but I think that April should get one, because that way she'd be a gutter gun chocolate. <laughs> but, but we have, but a lot of the audience has been masked though. And I look out and I'm like, wow, is everybody getting ready to go to heist? <laughs> Well, it's the only time in our lives that you were forced to put a mask on before you go into a bank, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you feel comfortable if you don't have it on. Actually, but the the crazy, but the thing is though, is that in all seriousness, and you can appreciate this being a comedian, is um, one thing that I've had to do is I've really had to learn to trust my instincts, mm -hmm. and some nights my instincts are better than others. My instincts are always great. <laughs> I say, hey girl, don't do that. Did she listen? No. <laughs> Oh, as soon as we get the May show, then then you can do the reverse roll and see how that goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can do the reverse roll right now. I'm in charge, and it the puppet. <laughs> see, I'm the, can, I'm the can, ventriloquist now. We're doing a voice swap. How do you like it, Steve? Great, but I can see both your hands. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, question for you, April. Mm -hmm. What has your favorite gig been in your career? Oh, my favorite gig in my career, uh, oh God, I've actually liked them all. Like, even the bad ones, because the bad ones give you a lot of stories. But the good ones, I'd have to say a lot of the earlier shows I did in New York City, where it was like a free-for-all, they were free, some of the audiences didn't speak English. It's because I really was a part of a community. Yeah. And that's the nice thing about comedy and performance, is even in this pandemic, we're still a community. Do any of your uh, performers speak foreign languages? Uh, on this show, Burlesque, uh, we have a young woman from Germany, I believe, oh, actually. Okay. Yeah. She's bilingual, I think. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Well, we are we're excited to have shows back, uh, being in, in Burlesque, and then as we get beyond the pandemic, do you see a chance to headline your own show in, say, a great studio or a, a stage room like this one? I see an opportunity to headline my own show, hopefully, God willing. But um, what about you, May? Well, I'm gonna be headlining my show because I'm going solo and I'm dumping ink roll. Okay, okay, May, stop it, stop it. But yes, we see an opportunity to headline our show. Excellent. And um, and I think that that would be exciting. And you know, and here's the thing though, I think this opportunity with burlesque is actually gonna give me the tools to headline my show because at first when I got out there, I'm like, oh my God, my goal is not to die tonight. And right. you know that is a comic, right? Yeah. My big, it's like, please God, don't let me die. Like, cause you're, you're just pictured yourself dying, the worst death. And actually I felt that, you know, my goals were bigger than my fears and my goal is to reach my audience. And so hopefully I've been doing that every night and that's gonna help me become a better comic. Now I understand uh, prior to the pandemic, you had a show uh, at a local hotel casino that you introduced a political character and that wasn't received quite well. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh yes, oh yeah, yeah. Um, Donald J. Tramp, I had him as a part of the show and I was supposed to go up there. And the uh, then GM of the casino was, I'm not talking just a Trump fan. I mean, he's a coronavirus denier. He's wearing the little tinfoil hat. He's denying the election. He found out about it and he wanted me out of there. Okay. Yeah, and he's since been fired, which shows that God hates the same things we all do. Outstanding. <laughs> uh, I, I don't even know how to comment on that. Uh, I mean, the idea behind the show business world, though, is that if you have a talent and you have some material, that you should be free to perform that the way that you've been inspired by it. Uh, your character, I may not be a person that could uh, do ventriloquism with May, uh, I may have my own characters, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and I should be able to perform my own material and should do it in a way that I feel is appropriate, and then leave it up to the audience to make that decision. Oh, I agree, I agree with you a thousand percent, because the big struggle with comedy these days is we have the comedy police, which I'm not a fan of the comedy police. If you don't like a comedian, don't see their stuff. Don't watch their special, don't, but don't tell them what they can and can't say, or if you don't feel that so-and-so is not represented well, 
then make your own. Like, stop whining. Make your own. And so the comedy police, they're just a bunch of joy kills with no creativity. You know, and they just want to cancel everybody. It's like, okay, I get it. Like, let's have the conversation. You know, if you want to have a conversation about representation, have the conversation, but don't cancel everybody. Like, don't tell somebody they can't do this, they can't do that. You know, if you don't like somebody, change the channel. There's always that. It's like, if you don't want a comedian that's offensive, go to an alt comedy show. You're going to have a good time. Not There's a market for everybody. Uh, somebody that I look up to immensely, Otto Peterson. Do you know Otto Peterson? I uh, no, do not personally know. Otto and George, the late great. He was a X-rated ventriloquist. Okay. He was not for everyone. Right, right. But he was awesome. So, and I appreciate you calling me a comedian because back in the 80s and 90s when I practiced the craft, uh, fortunately there was no social media, fortunately there was not a lot of reporting going on. My claim to fame is in 1985, I was bumped at George McKelvey's Comedy Club in Denver, Colorado by Roseanne Barr. Oh! Yeah. So, I was right up there. I was feeling pretty good about it. I, I knew the day that I was done. It was 1992, and I just knew that I was done pursuing that as a craft. You've been doing this for a number of years. Do you see yourself going on, continuing doing it? Do you want to change anything? Do you like what you're doing? Well, I've had to adjust my act a little bit because of the, the distance and everything else. But, you know, I'm sure that I'll always tweak and change my act, and I'll always tweak and change for everything, but honestly, I don't see myself stopping because I've tried to quit before and it won't let me. <laughs> it's like it's, smoking. Yeah, exactly. It's like smoking. You can never put it down. <laughs> Is there like a ventriloquist patch you could put on? If only, right? You know, like a number of years, I actually, I hit a real rough patch in my life. Like everything was going wrong. You know, it's like relationship, housing, health, everything. And I was like, I'm going to quit. So I get this call from this booker and this is out of the Woody <coughs> Allen movie and he goes, um, can you be at a gig this weekend? And I'm like, what? And he goes, listen, you need to replace this ventriloquist. And this guy's since been deceased. And he goes, um, he... Is that why you had to replace him? Well, no. This oh. is why I had to replace him. He was showing up to his gigs without his puppets. He was going through a nervous breakdown. And so the booker goes, you got to ease people into it. You can't just go to old turkey. Wow. So I replaced him. And it's like, well, um, I guess I'm back. Wow. <laughs> So he's a ventriloquist without, would he just do the hand? And the, I get, I don't know, like he was just showing up without his puppets and, Yeah, and it was like totally weird, but I said, hey crawl, you can't quit, cause I'm fabulous and I need a friend <laughs> to feel sorry for, and that's you. <laughs> is that part of a female relationship to feel sorry for each other? Or I guess, yeah, is that, is that part of our relationship? Well, I'm the fabulous one, and April, well, she's kind of there. So is there a show tonight? Yes, there is actually, there is a show tonight. What time? Uh, the show tonight is 9.30 tonight, and we have another one at 9.30 tomorrow night. And as far as I know, they're sold out, but, you know, show up in case. Well, the good news is it's January 1st, 2021 right now. This mm -hmm. will be recorded, so people will be watching it in five years from now. So this could be January 1st, 2026, and we're celebrating our 250th anniversary as a country. And they won't know that we're sold out that night because you'll be a different venue, bigger room, more seats. you got your own show. You, you've gotten rid of the dead weight. And I'm just talking to her. Oh! I meant that very complimentary, of course. Well, you know, I'll have my own show, Steve, and you'll be interviewing me. And by, that, and by that time, I'll have a sugar daddy. Very good. That's, that's some, it's a goal to shoot for, and I'm, I'm glad for you. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you see, we all have to have goals. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, tonight being the first of 2021, the shows you believe are sold out tonight, which is fantastic to hear. Vegas is mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. But coming up in the next several weeks, and anyone that's watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, wherever it's uh, being seen, uh, you want to go to uh, Ticket Kite? Ticket Kite, yep, TicketKite.com. Yep. Can, can they call the Alexis Park and get information from the Alexis Park? Or is there, uh, yes, they can. Yes, they excellent. can, yes. Fantastic. So we're located at the Alexis Park Resort, which is across from the Virgin Vegas, which is the new uh, hotel hasn't opened yet as mm -hmm. of today. Mm -hmm. Spectacular building. It's where the old Hard Rock was. Mm -hmm. uh, down, we're just down from the White Castle. Yeah, we're just down the street from the White Castle, where all good things happen. 
at the White, the White Castle. I, what a line to get in the White Castle. It's easier to get into a casino than the White Castle. I know, I know, I know. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with me. Thank you. Oh, actually, we got to do the Corona cup at the fist bump. There we go. Yes. And, uh, and I can't wait to see the shows tonight. Uh, for the rest of you, uh, get online at ticketkite.com. You can call the Alexis Park. Also, just look at shows in Vegas. They're back. Uh, I believe there's about 15 shows right now advertising. Uh, as we get into 2021, we expect a lot more. There's more venues that haven't opened yet. Uh, as business continues to improve, as the medicine gets better, as life gets better, we look forward to getting back to the part where we can come to Las Vegas and be entertained in all different facets. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, and check us out on aprilbroker.tv as well as social media. We are there too. And send me a creepy fan letter. You know I love them. <laughs> Outstanding. Uh, thank you again for coming on. This is uh, Las Vegas. Uh, and I want to make sure I get it right because we're up close yet six feet away. And uh, we're, we're doing it the safe way right now. But uh, be sure to come on out and enjoy the show and enjoy Las Vegas. Las Vegas is open and we are back.